Get into it. It's soft and voluminous. Snap, 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 snap. Yes. This is not a drill. This wig wear. Wig wear. Today, my wash and go is looking extra popping, which is only fitting because today I'm going to do my top five tips for a popping wash and go. Can y'all believe? And I just, I'm just getting this off my chest. Somebody commented under like multiple of my videos, the same person, and they're like, she's a liar, don't believe her. Her hair is clearly a wig. She's trying to fool you guys. She never parts her hair in any of her videos, blah, 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 blah. Clearly she's not a real supporter because I be doing my whole head. Y'all be seeing the parts, y'all see everything. Why would I lie about my hair being a wig? You know, people just, I feel like maybe she was just a troll and you're not gonna find that comment nowhere because I deleted it. Like I did not feel like going back and forth with her trying to prove something that is clearly, I don't know, why would I, I'm not gonna argue with people, but I just thought it was kind of funny that she was all bent out of shape saying like, clearly nobody's hair looks like that, it's a wig. I guess I'm gonna just take it as a compliment and keep it pushing. So today I just made a little list for you guys, um, some tips that really would have helped me when I was trying to get a pop and wash and go, and if I would have known them sooner, I would have had a pop and wash and go a long time ago. If you're new here, my name's Jalen Mitchell, also known as Natural Rain. And don't forget to subscribe down below and click the notification bell so you don't miss my new uploads and uh, I guess I'm gonna get into the video. Quick little disclaimer, I do wanna say that everyone's hair is different but these are the tips that help me to get a bomb wash and go. So you just have to try things, don't be afraid to try things. If they don't work for you, they don't work for you but give it a go and if it does work for you, you can just thank me later, now, whenever, you know, I'll wait. Okay, like I said, these aren't in a specific order but number one is that your hair must be soaking wet. I know this sounds like duh but when I first started doing my wash and goes, I thought damp was enough and I played myself. Damp is not enough. You want your hair to be soaking wet. For me, I find that when my hair is soaking wet, it is the most frizz free that it is going to be. If your hair starts off frizzy, it's not going to dry less frizzy, okay? That's just not going to happen so you can get that out of your head. You want it to be as frizz free as possible so make sure it's soaking wet. Also, I find that my hair takes in the products better when my hair is soaking wet. So soaking wet is the way to go. Not damp, not just a little bit of water, I mean, soaking wet. I also add water between adding products. So if I use a leave-in, first I'm gonna apply water, then I'm gonna use the leave-in, then I'm gonna apply some more water, then I'm gonna use a gel or a custard or whatever my next product is. I'm going to add water even in between stages because I want it to be as wet, as close to soaking wet as it possibly can. That's why you guys usually see me wear a towel or use a shirt that I don't really care for because my hair is going to be wet all on my shoulder and that's just what's gonna give me the best, most pop and wash and go. So my second tip is to prep your hair by cleansing and deep conditioning. Now, I feel like this step is really slept on because everyone wants to talk about the best wash and go combo, which don't get me wrong, it is really important. But the prep that you do before you style your hair is also equally, if not, I don't wanna say more important, but like really teetering on the edge right there. So if you are not starting with a good base of moisture, your hair can feel dry, even when you're putting in quote unquote the right products, you need your hair to be moisturized. You also need your hair to be cleansed. So the reason I say cleanse your hair is because if you have a lot of product buildup, and then you go and you add more products and then you find that your hair isn't coming out the way that you want it to, it's probably because you have too much product on your hair. It's, you know, I don't know another way to explain it, but cleanse your hair properly. This is good for your scalp and this is also gonna make sure that the products that you're applying, um, they're fresh, they're new, and those are the only products. You don't wanna have last week's products plus the week before that because you're not properly cleansing your hair. You just wanna have a clean base and then you wanna apply your products. The reason I say deep conditioning is important is because that's, that's your base of moisture. Every single time that I wash my hair, I deep condition. I don't usually use regular conditioner, I just go straight to the deep conditioner and I use that to help me detangle my hair. I usually am a little too lazy to keep the deep conditioner in like overnight or even for like three, four hours 
usually lazy i'll just shampoo deep condition leave it in for the duration of my shower now i will admit i do like to take long showers don't hurt me so that may stay in for like 30 minutes and then i'll go ahead and rinse it off and that's really all i need to keep my hair moisturized and to go ahead and start applying those other products you might hair to be clean i need to be moisturized which means not skipping out on deep conditioning number three i feel like is also a duh but like I said, when I started doing wash and goes and I was trying to figure out what was working for my hair, um, I, I didn't really know about this. I don't know. I'm just going to say it just to clear the air just in case. But basically, after styling with products, avoid touching and manipulating your hair. So like I said, when your hair is wet, it is the most frizz free that it's going to be. And if you just work so hard to make sure that your hair is frizz free or as close as it can be, you want to make sure your hair is defined and all that, you're going to mess it up by continually touching your hair. You touch your hair to style it. And once it is styled, you leave it alone don't touch it yes it's still soaking wet don't touch it either sit under the dryer or diffuse and even when you're diffusing excuse me even when you're diffusing you don't want to go like this and don't do all of that you're doing the most take the diffuser and just put it like this go like yep one two you can flip your hair one two Okay, flip it to the other side. Yep, go crazy. Flip it to the front. You can flip it wherever you want to. Just don't do all of this. Oh, let me just, because you're creating a necessary frizz. You don't want your hair to be frizzy. You want it to dry in place, and then you can add the type of volume that you want. You don't want bad frizz. My hair right now, it has like that good voluminous frizz, if that's what you want to call it. It makes my hair voluminous, but that's because I waited until it dried and then I picked it to get volume. You don't want your hair to have volume in all the wrong places, basically just making frizzy, unruly curls. So just wait, do yourself a favor, wait until it's dry. My, this is falling off on both sides, going wild. Okay, look at me. All right, we back. Um, Just make sure it's completely dry before you start manipulating it with your hands and before you start taking the moisture out of your hair. That's just what I recommend. So my number four tip is to start with less product and then add more as needed. Now me personally, I'm heavy handed, especially with my leave-in. My hair loves me for it because my hair just drinks up moisture because I am high porosity. So what I recommend, whether you're low porosity or high porosity, but especially if you're low porosity, try less product. Add the water, then add some leave-in. Then if your hair is not moisturized enough, add some more, but don't add too much, especially when it comes to gel. It's really hard to remove the product when you've had too much. It's way easier and less wasteful because I know them hair products can be expensive and less wasteful um, to just add a little, add a little before you add too much. You know, just a little at a time to see what your hair really needs, especially if you're just trying to figure out what works for your hair. So me at this point, I know how much product my hair can take, how much product I need. But if you're just trying to do your wash and go, just trying to figure out what works for you, less is more until you actually need more. Does that make sense? I feel like it makes sense. Just less than more. So number five is to tackle your hair in small sections. Now, if you've watched my wash and go videos, if you haven't, you know, I'll have it linked up there. I'll have one of them because I got a whole series, y'all. But if you watch my wash and go videos, then you know that I usually do my hair in four sections, but I would not recommend that if you were just starting out. If you are just starting out, take as many sections as you need because the smaller the sections, the more you can make sure that the product is evenly distributed. I do wash and goes all the time, so I have this down to a science, but until you get it down to a science, if you need eight sections, I told you I take four, but if you need eight sections, ain't no shame in your game. This is going to help you better manipulate your hair. Make sure you have enough water, make sure you have enough leave-in and enough gel in each section so you're reducing the frizz. And don't get discouraged because eventually, like I didn't start off with four sections. I think I started off with like six, but eventually as you get better and better and better, you know what your hair needs and then you can do less sections. All right, so number six, I know I said there are only gonna be five tips, but I got a little bonus, you know what I'm saying, for you guys. So number six is to find out your hair's porosity. Now, like I said, my hair is high porosity, but there are people who have low porosity and there are people who have normal porosity, which is somewhere in between. If you don't know what porosity is, basically it is how well your hair absorbs moisture and product. So for me being high porosity, it means that moisture gets into my hair really quickly, but it also leaves just as quickly. Low porosity on the other hand, it is hard for the product to really get into the hair shaft, 
but then once it's there it stays at least more easily than high porosity and then normal porosity is somewhere in between like you got to work a little bit but it stays longer than high porosity there's that um one test i don't i don't remember exactly what it's called but you basically take a cup of water and you take like a piece of um shed hair put it in the water if it sinks to the bottom that means you are high porosity if it flows at the top that means you're low porosity and if it's somewhere in between then that's like normal porosity. Basically from knowing your porosity, you can then tailor your hair routine. If that means um, looking up wash and go videos for low porosity hair or looking up wash and go videos for high porosity hair and seeing what other people who have hair similar to yours are doing, I recommend to do this more than looking up wash and go videos with your hair type. Hair type can play a role, but it is not as big as your porosity. I can watch someone do a wash and go video with hair just like mine or it looks just like mine so they can have that 4a 4b texture and it act completely different okay because their hair is low porosity and mine is high porosity so they have to work those products in more more than i would have to the the process is just different so for example if you're low porosity people recommend to use warm water when you spray your hair because warm water will open your hair cuticle allowing the products to get in easier for me it don't matter if i use cold water warm water hot water in different water the it, the product is still going to absorb so i really just recommend doing your research finding out porosity really made a huge difference in my whole routine because i was able to find tips catered to me not catered on the look of my hair but catered to the way my hair acts all right y'all so those are basically my five tips plus like a little bonus for you guys comment down below let me know any tips that you have for getting a bomb wash and go and i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next video bye y'all